Hi, greeting. I'm Vincent. Thanks for joining us for Sparkle Web Vulnerability Scanner. Um, technical walkthrough and features over. Um, this section, we will concentrate on the next Sparkle um, generic um, feature set that uh, most of people want to see in action. So for the rest of items like um, how to perform a uh, web scanning, how to generate the report, or even for have a separate uh, next bucket enterprise edition uh, walkthrough sections, right? Uh, we spread out to make it uh, manageable in terms of the length. Huh? If not, it's just too long. As to um, this section, what can you expect? It um, will be on the features overview in terms of the walkthrough and technical demos over um, for the next part of features overview. Um, we will also spend the time on the cover light, the latest update um, based on the time that um, the section that we prepare and the new feature and changes. And we will stop in at the frequent asked questions and to let you all to voice up um, for any question uh, you need to be clarified and so on uh, before we are closing for this uh, section. So next Parker features overview. What you see now is a next Parker dashboard. Uh. Of course, um, we already pre scan to fill it with the results so you can see like uh, what you see here. Before we continue further, uh, we note that next Parker is a dash too. Uh, basically mean that it is using for the uh, application security testing in the approach while the dynamic application security testing. So in a layman term, uh, um, it is a backbone web application security testing tool for performing the runtime or develop website. It is ready to cut over to production. Want to do a quality insurance, the QA, um, security insurance as a period for the productions and of course use on the production web application security testing in the interval you want to scan and rescan this is the purpose for the uh, using of the tool and the main use case eh? unless you want to test eh, for the login and credential based scanning or weak authentication mechanism or full force user id and password cracking L, you no need to have the credential. What you need in hand is just the IP or website URL. You want to scan is more than enough. Of course, uh, you must be have the permissions uh, to scan all the web asset is belong to your enterprise. Uh. Start from the website discovery features. Um, it is particularly useful for big organizations. Uh, that um, have too many websites and accept that they are not even able to track it to have the accurate figures. As bigger the organization, the more you need department, divisions, and multi-country and global scale of the global organization, the more complex to come up and knowing in exactly how many websites they have. Eh? Just imagine for business user and marketing department officer, they set up a new subdomain temporary project uh, used to uh, subdomain uh, for tracking uh, online campaign effectiveness, but end up forgot to clean up those a new subdomain and project specific application that supposed to close or retire after the project end, but they end up keep living in the cyberspace. Discover website features will become very handy to address the issue because it will show all the website in one list view. You can even export them to CSV for distribute to the different group later on. Uh, since it's a CSV, right? So you can be uh, filtered by website, by country, uh, by IP or subdomain based. Uh. We note for the long list of the website show in the Discover website is yet to count on the next bucket license uh, until you go to click over to create a website target then that 
at that point, uh, the specific itself will be count as a next buckle license tower. So uh, you can take the discover website. Um, it's a list of suggestions or add into target for license count, or you can click ignore them. Let's click on the application service discovery setting eh, to see in more detail uh, what we can do on this module. Eh. Um, as you can see, um, we can check um, based on the parameter, say we can discover based on the check parameter such as on uh, registered domain, it is the most common user eh, or reverse IP lookup um, L you may also consider like based on the organization name matching eh? then the other rest of the option is actually showing you on the screen eh? so that it is all the option you can using to find you your discovery website uh, scanning operation eh? to come up with the list for you to potential eh, that or suggestion for you to add in into the next part eh, uh, scanning operation of course though add in one you count the license from there like just we click over right um, additional fine tuning option for like match setting second level domain organizations IP address excluded second level domain excluded top level domain, excluded organization name, excluded IP address, etc, etc. Let's now go over to technology sections or module 1. When you click on the technologies from the pull down, click on the dashboard. As you can see, all the scan website it will generate a dashboard of used web technologies. Eh? It allows users to have a visual understanding what web technology they are dealing with. Besides show the most identified technology, it will also detect out of the technology based on the current running version signatures and the version matching. Eh? For example, we click on the jQuery, right? It will show all the version of um, version of the uh, website is using them any out of date technology that being used uh, uh, can be sent an email notification to the website owner or system administrator to act on it you can go over to notification sections uh, um, to create a new notifications choose out of date technology um, any website and you email to the user group for you chosen. It can also be sent by SMS as well. It is crucial eh, to acting on the out-of-date technology since that the hacker will use that version to exploit your applications. Eh? You can use the identified technology and out-of-date technology detect eh, to make a formal decision what to do with them to minimize your enterprise cyber exposure risk. Click on the recent technologies. Eh? It will filter based on the identified versions, out of date versions, whether still in use or not. Eh? Um, or you can filter by specific technology such as a database system. Eh? We can uh, filter the state uh, by saying whether still in use uh, and not in use. Uh, that will be help you to make a um, decision much faster to decide for the subsequent action to be taken. Uh. Multi-user management. Uh, we can add unlimited of user. Uh, and define what they can do in the form of group or individual user. Of course, um, it depends on addition of next parker you use. Eh? For next parker team and enterprise addition, 
uh, we can put website into group or user into group that simplify the multi group and user management we can say um, define permission to access for certain website into group or based on division of duty and responsibility according to how your enterprise um, is divide the task eh? then now add a new team member eh? beside the standard name email phone number eh? you can define whether to let the say user access to the next buckle api access um, usually most of the normal user you don't know need to have this access eh? so uh, you can further define the account permission whether the user that uh, you created is administrator allowed to access to the uh, manage the website then scan permission whether he just allowed to do the start scanning it can view scan report usually like managers or auditor eh? it's like uh, manage the issue like for developer right or manage issue in restricted so um, beside that you can also define the user into a different group assignments eh? and the user can belong to multiple different group beside add user memory eh? uh, we can also add user say from a uh, single sign on eh, the SSO right um, popular single sign on provider eh? already supported you can see on the right hand side right all those uh, brands there uh, this is helpful in particular you want to bring in the third party to users right and simplify your user and group management this way let now look into issue management eh? click from the issue module uh, you can click to do so to show you why all the to do need to be dead actions you can sort it in dynamically according to your use case right? so when you click in one of the issue it will show you in more detail uh, it will show you in the more detail like the detail issue view and the uh, issue details eh? the issue tag will confirm is mean 100% confidence um, also for why action can be taken regarding to the same vulnerability detected you can also tracking the issue over the time and history when and who did what uh, in the past before you take the next actions for developers eh, you can even come up to the update sections to update the vulnerability eh, by click on fix and confirm and let the scanner retest to make sure it is um, for the scenario you can also update it as a false positive if you or your user are technically confident to do so eh, uh, in the future it will no more be flagged again eh now let's look into next part of integrations eh? this is for the customer in the software development life cycle uh, sdlc eh? this and uh, new case environment to make them more easy to do next part of, and being part of their bigger operation and uh, workflow process eh? so after click on integration tab click new integrations eh? As you can see uh, from the supported issue tracking system, the project management, uh, continuous integration, continuous delivery system, the CICD, uh, um, communication, and the next buckle API options is support out of the box for the continuous automations uh, and the integrations issue tracking system such as Zira, Fortback and uh, ServiceNow uh, is two-way integration ready um, that means that uh, NextParker 1 export the issue to the system 
developer one fix it and mark as done, right? It can sync back the state to next parker to auto trigger the retag to make sure it is uh? um, as you use the tool um, not in the least you can use next parker api for your own development team uh, for the uh, custom integrations from the above um, it should cover and most of the generic uh, feature set that um, you may be expected to see during the demo um, at the same time for the technical explanation as we probably fit during just the uh, demo and walkthrough sections and, um, however um, I would like to open this uh, frequent ask question section uh, in case you have any um, additional questions in your mind that you want to be uh, voice up that uh, we can be clarified uh, and then to address it then before we make the closing. Of course, um, if you not manage to be submit the question and we answer during this uh, fixed time frame that we allocated, uh, you are always uh, feel free to be sent over to our email info info at e spin C O R P N. So we will always have people will be uh, work with you on your question in mind, right? Okay, let's start the sessions. I would like to thank you for all your patience and your time to uh, spend with us on this um, technical overview and walkthrough sections. We hope that that help you for the intent uh, when you join for the sections and we do help you to address for the common feature set thing you have in mind we were looking forward to have um, another section into the relevant area um, if you found that is useful um, once again thank for joining us and everyone have a good day there eh?